<laughs> oh, perfect timing. Ooh, I know. Look at this. What's that? I didn't want you to have to sit with the whole thing and sit down. That's a I saw the danger and I passed along the enchanted way. I don't know why this is so dark. I guess it's because it is dark. Oh, oh God. At the dawning of the day, I gave her gifts. Of the mind, I gave her secret signs that's known to artists who have known true gods of sound and stone. But words and tint without stint, I gave her poems to say with her own name there and her own dark hair. I thought I'd go back. Like now, I can't. I can't. I got to. I need to live with it. I gotta go back. I don't want to be a vampire anymore. You saved me. Nine and nine and nine. I love you. I have seen the muse, and she has spoke to me. I am the apples and the trees, and mystery in the heart of things. Goodbye, fellow me. In 1961, that fire destroyed nearly 500 homes in one of Los Angeles' richest communities, of course, an unheard of loss in those days. Minutes later, the first alarm was sounded. Mount Patrol and all units concerned, they reported brush fire in the mountain area, 3,600 blocks, Stone Canyon. Skinner Canyon, we need police assistance here to evacuate these people. We are going to lose some civilians if we don't get them out of here. Trapped on foot between Shalon and Oscar We need help from the police department. The systems worked as well as they could. No one died, but much was lost. Tested the faith of those who lived here. There's one juniper tree missing. There was one on the left, and there were two um, that uh, were on fire that I saw, and probably your news class. But two of them on fire. Philomena Long was a young nun on this campus then. Uh, at the moment the flame leaped, um, we were t the chapel bell rang and uh, we presumed that we were to come down and pray for the fire to leave. Uh, they told us to get our blankets, and uh, we came back with the blankets, and uh, I believed that we were going to fight this fire, a hundred nuns on the side of the mountain. When the 12-hour ordeal ended, the campus had almost miraculously been spared. become grass you will see all things at the same time 
and be blind, I promise. Philomene Long is the antithesis of what one would call an academic poet. A woman who walks the walk and talks the talk, Ms. Long is every inch the poet. It is wonderful to be in. <laughs> Actually, my mother came from Ireland to be a writer, and she, she died before she could become a writer. And um, when I was young, and um, one day I was writing a poem, and I, and I, I asked out loud, actually, I wonder if my mother can hear my poems. And this rain started to fall. And I looked out the, the window, and it was all blue skies. There wasn't one cloud in sight. And so I stuck my head way outside my apartment window, and there was one little cloud the size of my apartment raining on my apartment. So this is from my mother. Sometimes I feel I can hear her when I write a poem. When it ends, she is gone. I am always reluctant to end a poem.
Alright, he's only sitting down for a few moments. I'm getting him back up. Before the, the water longed to comb to the, to the sands, the wind to play with the grass, the wor word, and from the uh, unnameable, there is one, one birth, one death, immense. Yet one small cup contains it. There is, there is one book, one writer, and the reader, the, the writer, the book, are one. Do you think he said your David, name enough? David Amran said that was a little bit of an excessive warm-up, was it? <laughs> I was going to say, oh, it's a cigarette. Oh. I thought there was some practical joke going on. <laughs> Are you leaving? Yeah, I said, no. I said, just promise to come with me every night. <laughs> Are you leaving? No, she's having a I cigarette. Don't, I don't want to have a cigarette. My first act as Poet Laureate is to define the word epiphany. Yeah. It is to rent the veil. It is the reason we come to Venice. It is what we get whether we want it or not. Woo. To live in the state of wonder and I humbly accept the position of being both the silence and voice of the wonder of Venice. Yeah! Yeah! I feel very blessed on my first day as mayor of the city of Los Angeles. Yeah! And you know, it was fitting because uh, as I heard uh, the poem by Philomene Long, thinking about Venice. Our guest for the moment of inspiration. Thank you, Mr. President. The program, we were all inspired um, by a great poetess or poet um, from Venice uh, that um, came in front of the program, and I would like to uh, introduce her, Philomena Long, uh, to be our inspiration this morning. As I would like to read this to welcome Bill Rosendahl on behalf of Venice and Beyond Baroque. You can believe it. Okay. 